Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'm recording this video as a response to a comment that we received in one of our previous videos that um, you would like some more information on how to work with measuring codes inside of your feature code libraries. So let's start today by uh, inside of Feature Definition Manager and, and talk about our line control codes first. First and foremost, these are line control codes. So if you try and use them with a point feature, they're not going to work. Um, so what you may have to do is create a line feature for something that may have been traditionally a point, or you may have to come up with a new word to coincide with that feature that you want as a point that would then be your line that you'd be able to use some of the control codes with. So what control codes allow you to do are uh, all kinds of things. So you can start a joining sequence of a line. Um, and then when you do that, you can just have one feature for say a sidewalk. You don't have to have sidewalk one, sidewalk two, sidewalk three, sidewalk four. You can actually just have one feature for sidewalk and then you can use your control code to control it. And you would use the start line command to then start the joining sequence of it. And then it would be, so your it would be sidewalk and then start. And then your next code would be sidewalk and then sidewalk and sidewalk. And then when you get to the end, you hit sidewalk and end. And then that is all one closed line. And then your very next point can then be a sidewalk again on a new sidewalk where you hit sidewalk start and there won't be a line that's drawn in between those two. So that's a control code in a nutshell. Um, these control codes also apply to blocks, but I'm gonna go over blocks and block control codes in a separate video because there's just as much content in that as there are in lines. So the important takeaway from your feature definition manager is that if you want to use these control codes, you have to have a line feature. So for today, I started with the Global Features 9.0 feature code library and then added two additional line features that we're gonna go ahead and use. The first one, I went in and put in a damaged area. And the second one was a pothole. Kind of the same thing, but it gave me two different options to use uh, while we're showing the demonstration. So my recommendation, if you want to, if you've never used these before, if you have uh, doubts about how things are going to work for you, um, I would suggest copying the Trimble Global Features version 9.0 library and, and make your own file out. So just save it as a new name, make it your own, and then start editing from there. Because they've already gone through and, and taken the time to name all of the different things. So if you don't want to go through and figure out what codes you want for all of that, they've done it. Um, if, on the other hand, you already have this developed, then you can use your same nomenclature. So now we're going to go ahead and jump over to Trimble Access. And I'll go ahead and come out to here and we'll create a new job. And you'll notice here that I'm just, I'm working in my computer. So I'm in a manual mode. I'm just working in the scale factor of one. Um, and here is the feature code library that I'm using. Okay, so to get started, we'll go ahead and come up here and I'll come in and say I want to measure. And I'm using, like I said, my, my manual style. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a station setup. And we'll call our instrument point name number one. Operator is zero. And our northing we'll put in at And for my backsight, um, since I am in a manual mode, I'm just going to do an angle only backsight and my backsight direction will be zero. And so I'm just basically zeroing my horizontal angle to, to north. So I'll come in here and again, I'm, I'm doing a zero, a zero, doing an angle only. And then in my next step here, I actually have to um, 
become my total station and then provide it with horizontal vertical angle and slope distance. So again, we're just going to zero out and store that. And now we are ready to survey. Here we are. OK, so like I said, um, now that we've got our feature code library loaded up, now we're just going to start our regular topo. So we'll start with a sidewalk. OK, so we'll come up to our measure in our code. Once I hit the S, it's going to take me to the S in my um, feature code library. And I can either scroll through at this point and find the attribute that I want, or if I know what it is, I can just keep typing. So I'll put sidewalk, and then I'm going to go space. And then my start line command is ST, and then there's my start line. So you notice I've got two codes in here. So I enter, and now I'm going to hit measure. And we'll just go, we'll, we'll come up at a little bit of an angle. So we'll go off it at 45 degrees. And we'll start this fairly close to us. And now it wants to know what kind of surface that sidewalk is. So we'll call it a concrete. We'll store that. So there's our first point stored. And you notice that it's sidewalk start. This is automatically incremented to just be sidewalk now. So now I'm just walking along and I hit... That I want to take another shot, say that I'm out at about 30 feet now. Still on concrete. Now, as we're walking along the sidewalk, if the surface type changes, all I have to do is change my attribute. Again, that's a, a, a nice feature of having a feature code library is that you don't have to hit new ones each time. I just have to change the attribute if my surface type changes. But we're still on concrete. Observation tool. So now I'll zoom in on that a little bit. And so you can see what's going on here. No, so we're, we're drawing our line in here. So now let's say that our next point, we come up and, and we're at a sidewalk. But now we notice that we got a little bit of a, a, a pothole here. So now we'll add our pothole. And now this one is a different one. This one, I'm actually going to start a circle. So I put a space in and I put my S in again. So, so I'm coming up and I had the way I have all of my starts is they're going to be my S's. So at the very top of this is my start circle center. I also have a start circle edge. These are two different ways to draw a circle based on the control code. What I'm going to do here is do a start circle center because it's really hard for me as, as a manual total station to walk around the outside of a circle because I can't actually walk around it. So um, I'm just working things in a straight line. So I'm just going to do the start circle center. And what that'll do is it'll put the center of the circle. And then the very next point, it'll use that as the radius of the circle. So now I'll measure. about 40 feet here. Okay, so now, <clears throat> store that. Observation tool. Now, I'm still on my sidewalk, and I've got a pothole, and it started the circle center, and it knows that it wants another pothole point. So now I'm going to measure. Again, we're still online, but let's say that this time our, our, our distance here was, oh, I just got lost. Um, I think it was 31. Let's say it's about a foot and a half. And now when I store this, Observation tool. it has drawn that circle for me just based on the first point that I took and the second point that I took. In this case, I actually walked backwards on accident, but I'll, I'll continue forward. So now my next point, I'm not going to have any more pothole with it. I'm still just back on my sidewalk. I'll go measure, and we'll get us back out in front now. Let's see, we're at about 50 feet. Observation tool. Okay, so now I'm back online with that. Now my next one out, I can actually put in. This can be my end. End my line. 
let's say that we're at 45, slope distance of 60. Observation two. Okay, so now there's my first line. So now I'm gonna continue on, I'm gonna measure another sidewalk. Okay, but this time, so I'm not even gonna change anything here. Actually, I am, I'm gonna go sidewalk. I'm gonna put a start again. And now I'm gonna hit enter and measure, but now my horizontal angle will go back to north. Observation two. And then we'll put in another one going forward on this so that we can see that we're not connecting. So we'll measure and our horizontal angle is zero. So let's make that about 30 feet, give it a little bit of distance, enter, accept, store it. And now our last one, we'll put in that end command again. far enough. Observation two. So now, let me just move that. I'm just going to move my cursor off. So we'll do a measure horizontal angle at 270. So now as we're looking at this, here's the two lines that I've drawn. Notice they're both surface or there's both sidewalk lines, okay? Um, this one has a damaged area inside of it, but yet that line just continues on right through it because that sidewalk has continued on even though we added a damaged area with it. We have a line that's going straight north and that again is our, is our sidewalk and it is not connected at all. And we didn't have to put in a sidewalk one, a sidewalk two. So one of the other things that we're able to do with this, just to kind of round this up a little bit is, is let's go ahead and do a rectangle. Okay, and, and so let's say that we've got a, you know, for whatever reason, there's a, a little area we want to map out over here, which is called a damaged area. So we hit our measure and this is our, our damaged area. And this is actually going to be S R, which is my start rectangle, okay? I'll go enter, measure, and we'll bring this one south of us. So we'll go 180 for a slope distance of 20. Accept and store. So now, so now it knows that the next two points with this are going to be associated with the rectangle. All right. So it's going to need one to determine the length of it and one to determine the width of it. So we'll measure and our horizontal angle on this one will be 180, slope distance of, oh, let's call it 30. Yeah, it's... Okay. And now our last one, let's say our horizontal angle was like at 181. So let's see what happens with 35. Observation two. So now I'll escape here and zoom in on that. And now you can see our rectangle that we drew out there. Just based on having a line code, our regular line feature, and then adding control codes to it. And that one was just our start rectangle. So just one control code. And then it knew automatically that by that, it wanted to have the next two points to define that rectangle. Where did all of that come from? Well, again, when you open up and you start looking at your control codes, they are defined. So when I come into my start rectangle, and come over to my, it says that this starts a rectangle with an associated point as the corner point and the next point in the sequence as an adjacent corner point and either the width or the point on the opposite side must be specified. All right, so it's real clear as to what these are gonna do. If I wanna start a smooth curve, that starts a smooth curve. Um, if I wanted to look at the start circle edge and how is that different from the start circle enter or center, 
the edge starts a circle with an associated point as the first known point on the circle followed by the next two known points. So you would take one point on the circle, two points on the circle, and three points on the circle, and it would draw the rest of the circle for you. Versus what we did where we picked a point as the center of the circle, and then the next point that we that we've measured specified the radius. So this was just a quick little tutorial on how to use control codes. I hope you found this beneficial. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If there are other topics that you would like to see as a video from us, please also leave that in the comment section below. And thank you very much for your time.